Hi, welcome to our daily encounter. When we think about times when we have uh, addressed sins in another person's life, particularly someone who is living a sinful lifestyle, living in rebellion against God, what is the typical way that we have addressed those sins in, the, in that person's life? I would have to say that typically what we do is we want to address the outward actions. Uh, come to them with a list of things that they've done wrong. Tell them, hey, this is what you need to do that you haven't been doing. This is what you need to stop doing that you have been doing. And we merely want to reform them on the outside. Uh, even preachers can sometimes over-focus on uh, outward behavior. Uh, and... And just focus on, you know, what a person needs to be doing on the outside. You need to go to church more. You need to read your Bible more. You need to stop doing this sin and stop doing that sin. And, and certainly there is a time and a place uh, for that type of instruction. But what really needs to be done, oftentimes, is to get to the very heart of the matter, which is the person's heart. This is what Jeremiah, or actually God through Jeremiah does, in Jeremiah chapter 4. It, instead of giving a very long list of sins that they've committed, um, he addresses what the true problem is. And that was their heart. They had a heart issue. You know, Josiah uh, had come around this time and had brought reformation. He had brought outward change in Jerusalem and Judah by tearing down idols and by reestablishing much of the Mosaic um, commandments and the things that they were supposed to do according to the Mosaic law. But as you read Jeremiah here, you, you get the idea that even though perhaps these out, outward changes have been made, inwardly they were still sinful. And so we find in Jeremiah chapter 4, in verses 3 and 4, statements such as this. For thus says the Lord the, to the men of Judah and to Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and do not sow among thorns. Circumcise your hearts to the Lord, and remove the foreskins of your heart, men of Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, or else my wrath will go forth like fire, and burn with none to quench it. As you can see here, What's being addressed is the people's heart. Um, first, he talks about breaking up the fallow ground. Fallow ground was a ground that uh, had either neither been had either never been tilled before, or it had been a while since it's been tilled, and so it represents a, a, a hard ground. And the people's heart had become very hardened. And so what needed to be done was for the ground to be broken up. They needed to become broken on the inside. And, and that's true of uh, any person who has, be, has lived a sinful lifestyle against the Lord and has been living in rebellion. They need their heart broken once again uh, to become able to receive uh, the seed of God's word and therefore for it to take root and to bear fruit. James chapter 4 is a chapter directed towards worldly Christians. These are people who were merely focused on themselves. They were very selfish. They are all about um, acquiring worldly possessions. And this is what James instructs them to do. In verse 9 it says, Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord and He will exalt you. They needed to become broken again. They needed to be miserable, to mourn, to weep, and to uh, let their laughter be turned to mourn, their joy to gloom. And that's oftentimes what needs to happen in the sinner's heart. They need to be broken within so that God's word can then come in and be planted. But he also mentions circumcision of the heart in as we read in Jeremiah 4 and verse 4, where he says, Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and remove the foreskins of your heart. And of course, circumcision is a removal of the flesh. And it was something that was practiced by the Jewish nation from all the way back to the time of Abraham. 
But what they needed was not so much an outward circumcision, but an inward circumcision. Uh, the type of circumcision that Paul talks about in Romans chapter 2. And in verse 28 he says, For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that which is of the heart, by the spirit, not by the letter. And his praise is not from men, but from God. And so what is the circumcision of the heart? It's a cutting away of anything that is contrary to God. Cutting away of our own desires and our own um, lusts and, and our way of doing things. We have to cut all that away and, and to have a heart that is truly devoted to God that seeks His will and His purpose that is directed towards Him. And so a person who is living a rebellious life against God one needs to become broken before God, and then they need to have a, a circumcision, a removing of their desires. Because usually a person's sins is not just something that they do, it's, it's usually uh, an issue of the heart where they have a whole lot of desires, self-will, self-centeredness uh, that is causing that sin. And all that needs to be removed for a person to... to be devoted to God, uh, holy before Him. But then he also talks about washing the heart. In verse 14 it says, Wash your heart from evil, O Jerusalem, that you may be saved. How long will your wicked thoughts lodge within you? So there also needed to be a, a cleansing within. A cleansing of the thoughts. Um, here he's using the heart to talk about the thoughts, perhaps. He says, wash your heart, and then how long will your wicked thoughts lodge within you? You need to get rid of those wicked thoughts within. Um, it, even though a person might on the outside change their behavior, they might begin to stop doing things or, or begin doing things that they weren't doing, that they should have. If their thoughts are still evil, they're still going to have a struggle with those sins, and they're still going to have a tendency towards those sins. A person's mind has to be touched in order to bring about true reformation. And Paul would talk about in Romans chapter 8 that it is very important what our minds are focused on. If our minds are focused on the flesh, uh, it will bring death. But if we focus on the spirit, it will bring life and peace. Our minds are very important. Our minds direct uh, what we do. And uh, if the mind is not touched, then the actions will not truly be touched. Jesus uh, taught that if you cleanse the inside of the cup, the outside of the cup will become clean also. And so if you can touch the inward uh, activity of a person through their thoughts, uh, their uh, actions will be changed as well. As a matter of fact, the word repentance really means a change of mind. It means that you, your mind was directed towards yourself, towards your own way of living, and that becomes change. You turn around and now your thoughts are all about God, seeking His desires and His purpose and His will. So, these are some things to think about whenever we address a person who's engaged in rebellion and in a sinful lifestyle. We need to get really to the heart of the matter. There, there might be times you need to address the outward things, you know, especially if they're putting themselves or their loved ones, people around them in danger. Um, the outward behavior needs to change quickly before someone gets hurt. But uh, typically what needs to be done is for you to work on a person's heart. Do what you can to change their attitude towards God. Um, change their attitude towards life in general. And I, could, I would go on uh, to say that this could also be true of ourselves. As we look inwardly and we see ourselves constantly committing the same sins over and over and over. And you have those sins that uh, just seem to latch on and won't ever let go. It might be that they are hanging around because uh, you're merely trying to uh, address the outward behavior. So even in sin in our own life, we get to look to the heart of the matter. Is there something in my heart that's causing me to continually commit this sin? And that is causing this sin to con continually be a stumbling block for me. Maybe I need to change my attitude towards others or change the way I think about myself or my loved ones. Um, it needs to be a whole redirecting of um, my whole thought process, uh, the intentions of my heart, 
what I truly desire, you know, all those things need to be addressed. And then, if those things are properly addressed, then it very well could lead to a change in outward behavior and a uh, success against uh, these sins that tend to linger uh, for years and years. Well, thank you guys for listening in today. Love you guys. Hope you guys have a great day. God bless.